so uh, sadly, I, th- I think a lot of, and we've talked about this in the past, a lot of kind of our uh, left that came out of the Bernie movement. Bernie had a big blind spot for international relations, and a lot of the people who really got into politics or got radicalized through that share that blind spot. So I, th- I think it's worth going over some of the history of Haiti and how we got here. And I think most people in our audience will know it's the only successful slave uprising in history. I don't know if it's as well known the consequences that Haiti paid for that. So France actually imposed reparations on Haiti for its own liberation in exchange for recognizing it as an independent country. Um, Can you talk a little bit about the long-term devastating impact that's had on Haiti's ability to establish itself economically as an independent country? And then the United States later on took that over and what is today Citibank got some of that money. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the United States up until today has full spectrum uh, dominance uh, across Haiti. Uh, The United States engineered coups in 1991 and again in uh, 2004 against Jean-Bertrand Aristide and the Lavalas movement. The Lavalas movement really stood upon the shoulders of uh, so much uh, Haitian resistance going back to uh, Bukman and, and Macandal and Jean-Jacques Dessalines, the early uh, leadership of the Haitian Revolution, as Russell pointed out, because the Haitians were so bold and they overthrew uh, the slave masters and the slave traders, uh, the white supremacists of uh, yesteryear, as well as today, continue to see Haiti as a threat. If Haiti is successful, if this true black nationhood, if this true black self-determination, what would that mean? For the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and all of Central America and the Americas. Uh, so the U.S. has done everything overtly, uh, covertly. It's a hybrid war on Haiti. I think the same analysis that B.J. Prashad and others apply to the hybrid war, the multi-layered war against Venezuela, against Cuba, against Zimbabwe, against Bolivia, against Nicaragua, against any country that dares to have any uh, spirit of self-determination There's economic attacks uh, against Haiti every day, diplomatic attacks. Uh, Now it's the paramilitaries that they're using. Any Haiti watchers will remember the Tonton Makouts, which was the Mm -hmm. private army of uh, Jean-Claude Duvalier and Francois Duvalier before him. Today they are paramilitaries. The U.S. media says gangs. I think that is sociologically incorrect. These are death squads. The Haitians call it Yon Pour Gelamou a death project of uh, U.S. imperialism. But yeah, it's 220 years of, of, of a quest for sovereignty. I think we can really analyze everything that happens in, in Haiti through this prism, through this analysis of the Haitians, the grassroots, are fighting for their true sovereignty. And Uncle Sam, the bigwigs, the oligarchs that the U.S. government works with, whether it's Trump or Bush or Biden, or Biden I almost said, uh, oh, Biden, (laughs) Obama, (laughs) Biden, you know, one bleeds into the other. Uh, Clinton carried out the first military invasion in in, in, in 94 with 20,000 Marines. Uh, Bush oversaw uh, tens of thousands of troops, not just from the U.S., but from Brazil, from Chile, from Nepal. The Nepalese soldiers uh, threw their waste in the Latibonit River, resulting in the deaths of uh, tens of thousands of Haitians from cholera. So the U.S. is now trying to organize their fourth uh, invasion and occupation in the past uh, 100 years. So I think that's the number one demand of the Haitian people right now. Just like you always hear Black Lives Matter, imagine in 2024, Black people having to assert that their lives actually have value. Mm -hmm. In Haiti, one of the main slogans I always hear is Grand Moon Deadly. Uh, We are adults. We can make our own decisions. Imagine, you know, how many years after 1492 and how many years after 1620 in the pilgrims, the Haitian people still have to assert that they're not children and they don't need all of the paternalism, the colonial paternalism from the core group, from from Canada, from France, from the U.S. They can make these decisions on their own. Well, it seems like probably, I mean, 
paternalism certainly is a good word, but it seems at at from where I sit, and like I said, I know nothing about this compared to you. I don't want to try and fake like I'm you know qualified to go toe to toe with you. I'm certainly not. But that it seems is like, not our destiny, right? Uh, but it seems like sabotage to me. It seems like they deliberately keep their boot on Haiti's neck. Like it doesn't. Yeah, it seems like the sabotage of a people. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I first went to Haiti in 1998. I ended up in Haiti because I lived in the Dominican Republic. I was working with the anti-imperialist forces, the leftist forces in, in DR. That's where that book, The Saints of Santo Domingo, Dominican Resistance to Neocolonialism, uh, comes from, from all those years in DR. But then I saw the apartheid-like conditions that Haitians lived in in, in DR. There's all these conspiracy theories that DR is going to be wiped off of the map because of the black menace. It goes back to all the colonial mm -hmm. uh, tropes. But a high percentage of Dominican people have been duped into uh, believing this. No different than in, I just came from the, the Midwest and hearing all the xenophobic anti-immigrant you know, conspiracy theories uh, as well. And that's what first led me to go to Haiti to begin to study uh, uh, Haitian Creole. And I was first there in 1998. Uh, I was there in 2000, 2001, when jean Bertrand Aristide won his second democratic election. And um, this, this book right here is actually excellent, Damning the Flood, uh, Haiti and the Politics of Containment, Peter Howard. This will give you a 400-page deep dive into those years. Because Aristide is a true Haitian anti-imperialist, and, and his slogan was, from abject misery to dignified poverty. I mean, what a humble slogan, and mm. U.S. imperialism wouldn't even allow that. So they they choked, I mean, they, a nickname for Haiti is the Republic of NGOs. I don't think there's any country right. in the world with such a high ratio of NGOs in a, in a country with over 12 million um, um, people. So what the NGOs can do in the AIDS sector, and Jake Johnston just published a book on this called The AIDS State, just came out uh, about a month ago. Everyone should check it out. Yeah, you wrote a piece on that. I read that. Yep. Yeah. I didn't read the book. I read your piece on it. Yep. <laughs> you read the cliff though, the critical yeah. cliff <laughs> I read your cliff notes of it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a bad role model for us. <laughs> well, <laughs> to my credit, I just found out about the book through your review two days ago. So that's my excuse. Cool. And that's why we do it. So it's over at NACA, yep. North American Congress on uh, Latin America. And because the Roger Noriegas and the George Bushes and Otto Reich and these extreme right wingers didn't approve of, of Haiti and the popular government there, which overwhelmingly won. Lavalas means flood, a flood of the people. And they certainly, you know, won by a, a wide tidal wave margin in those elections. So what does the U.S. do? I think it was something like six hundred million dollars in aid that was coming through all these different NGOs and and of course, then you have the World Bank, and they just completely suffocate Haiti. They turn off the faucet of aid. They freeze out Aristide. They begin to, and this is truly full spectrum dominance. I was just learning. Um, some of the people who I've, I've, I, 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 I now I'm troubled if I still admire them, but they were receiving NED money. All these CIA National Endowment for Democracy. These outfits are U.S. aid. These outfits are everywhere in Haiti. So even some of the leftists with the most militant speeches are getting mm. money from there and the feminists. So it's it's I just every time I learn more about uh, uh, Haiti, it's a very dialectical struggle. And it seems like, you know, one step back, two steps forward. Um, but but today they're up against, you know, arguably one of their uh, their biggest challenges since uh, 1803. Please clap. <laughs> 